I don't know how to say this. Um, because it's kind of depressing. <laughs> but the night of the Queen Mary was the final straw. <sighs> What's up guys? I am recording this video 24 hours after we released the Queen Mary part two video. So I'm gonna be answering some questions about that. A lot of things were directed at me in particular. And so I have a lot of people wondering things that I wanna clear up. And then I just kinda wanna make this my final word of Queen Mary and I'll just like leave it at that. To start off before I even get into anything, I just wanna say if you didn't believe the Queen Mary video, uh, or if you don't believe any of our other stuff, then sure, I mean, listen, listen to this video because um, I want to explain some things, but don't leave hate, just leave, you know? If you're going to watch the video, just like have your opinion, but don't just hate because you want to hate. And the reason for that is it's not just like one of these other videos that's happened that scares me and stuff like that. This video really like changed my perspective on a lot of things. So whether or not you 100% believe it uh, for all the skeptics out there, whatever happened, like happened to me. So I know I can't give you the same experience. It doesn't have the same effect on you. So like, this is a very personal topic to me. So like, what I wanna say is like, think a little bit before you leave hate. And one more thing about that, before I get started, I just wanna say one more thing. Wow, like I have never seen so much hate on social media or in general than right now. And like, holy crap, 2018 summer, geez. I, I thought I could just, you know, ignore it, keep going, people forget about it or it got better. I just thought it was a funk or someone got in a fight, but no, stop hating each other. Holy crap, you can hate me all you want, whatever. I'm putting this out there and I'm completely fine. But if you're supporting, let's say me, and another person in my comment section is supporting me, or, or Colby, or anyone in the house, or any, anybody of my friends, like, why? Why do you go at them and just make them feel like crap? I just never expected that for a family that we are trying to promote confidence and you know going beyond the norm and just like taking chances and like being nice i never thought that this community of people would be so mean to each other so like i it sucks that i have to even say this but guys <laughs> we're all here to have a good time like even if someone else is hating don't join in and make it worse all right anyway i had to get that off my chest let's start this video one of the biggest comments that like scared the crap out of me was when i kind of blanked out and i know that was like a very weird thing to hear on audio when you couldn't see my face but basically what happened was in the middle of us talking to this demon so about midway through the queen mary video i started looking at corey's light like very blankly like almost like i couldn't talk and i told everyone that I was fully aware, but I, I felt like hypnotized. And I just kind of want to go over that because also something that they pointed out that we did not catch when we were captioning everything is that right after I go into this like weird phase where like we're asking these questions, and then I blank out and everyone's asking, are you okay, are you okay, are you okay? It doesn't look like you. I snap out of it, I'll say, no, I'm fine. Ask me a question. So what happened with Sam? What happened though? He just looked freaked out for a bit. That just didn't look like Sam. Like freak out, that's all. Well. No, I'm fine. <laughs> Dude, me and Jake both were looking at you. I, I was looking at Sam, you and Sam, I'm not that gonna lie. You, like you. you look scared. For like three seconds, you were just like this. Yeah, but before he did that, he was he shaked. And that doesn't really make sense. People are saying, why would Sam say, ask me a question, and then proceed to only give yes or no answers for the next minute? People are saying that I was possessed, or I was the demon, or anything like that. So, holy crap, one, you scared the crap out of me by saying that. Uh, but two, I want to say, like, guys, I'm not possessed. I was in shock. Looking back on it, going through it a bunch, and as Colby kept saying, it's like, I really do think I was just in shock. Like, this type of thing, to this extent, has, like, never happened to me on this level, to where I was like, wow, like, this is a being that I'm talking to, and I was just like, oh my god. No, I'm fine. Sure, ask me a question. I think I said, ask me a question, because I wanted them to, like, ask me a question that, like, I would only know to make sure I like, wasn't possessed and stuff, but they didn't do that. And it was whatever, so that was very confusing. I just wanna clear that up, guys. I've done so many 3AM challenges and haunted videos that if I were going to be possessed or had the opportunity to be possessed, it probably would have already happened. Second thing I wanna go over that was kinda of directed more towards me than anybody else is the same thing I just said. I've done so many 3AM challenges. I've had so many paranormal experiences. People were like, why did you hype this up? Literally, you guys are like, this was so life-changing 
and it was Knox. Like 99% of people, so this is literally just for the haters, but 99% of the people out there were like, wow, like this changed my life too. I believe so much now. Like I can't believe you captured something for such an extended period of time. So that that's awesome. And I'll talk about my overall thoughts about everything later. But for those haters that are like, yo, how in the world are you expecting this to be like, oh, the biggest thing that's ever happened? Like, why? Why are you making this such a big deal? Why was this hyped over for three months? You may ask, well, haven't you had noises in your own house? Haven't you had like paintings fall and like knocks and stuff like that before? And to that, yes, yes I have. Like you can go back through my videos and, ch and check them out, especially last October when it was the very, very worst that's ever happened. Like there were knocks and there was creaks and doors, there was opening cabinets, there was barking dogs at things. Yes, I am not knocking the fact that I have had multiple experiences with other things. However, the reason why I thought that this specific time was such a significant part of my life was because of the length and the communication. Everyone always makes fun of me for like calling out like, anybody there? If you're there, like show yourself. Never an answer. I'll get noises and I'll get scary footsteps every once in a while or I'll, like I pointed out a bunch of times, my paintings always fall off at weird points in the time and that scares the living crap out of me. Don't get me wrong. But think back on everything and those are just noises. Yeah, they're scary, but have we ever sat down for a 30 minute long audio clip unedited where every single question is answered? And yes or no, we got to the bottom. We actually had a conversation with something that was not human. And to me, that is unlike any other experience I've ever had. A lot of people out there, you haters, were like, guys, with all this hype, I was expecting you guys to be dragged across the room and slapped with blood and be hanging from the ceiling. And to that, I'm just laughing, sitting here like, that only happens in like paranormal activity movies. Like, that does not happen in real life. Or at least was not going to happen to us. Like, I'm not possessed. We weren't looking to get possessed. We aren't satanic people. We we're just there trying to contact something else. And we did. So like for all of you guys expecting us to like have death threats on us, have like a huge satanic voice saying like, oh, you will never pass or you'll never go to heaven. Like guys, be, be realistic. Us having a spiritual slash demonic experience for 30 plus minutes in one sitting, every single thing answered is incredible. Absolutely incredible. To me, that was much more of a sign than anything else. Now, one of the next biggest hate comments, and like I said, this is literally less than 1% of the comments. I'm just trying to help everyone understand uh, the caveats that everyone was trying to point out, was the fact that Jake said that at the end that there was six people experiencing this as opposed to five. Like, dude, this is raw footage of six guys oh, being scared to death. I just want to go over that. Like, obviously, that was just a mistake in saying words. We all, when we were editing back through it and listening, we're like, wait, Jake, you said six instead of five? And he's like, oh God, I always do that. And we just decided to leave it in uh, instead of going to re record. It's whatever. Two, there's a 38 minute video of the entire night across all hours of only the five people in the room. Like you watched part one, there was video evidence in all of part one and we filmed it the same night. Like that's evidence there too. And three, the biggest evidence of them all that there was only us five. If you think someone else was creating the knocks or anything like that, you had uncut audio of knocks coming from all different walls of the room and a huge, huge knock in the middle, if you guys remember, shaking basically the entire room. How in the world would a person go across all these walls while we're talking, not be on the audio? And two, how in the world would one person do all that? Because all these knocks were happening within seconds of each other, like even some were within seconds of each other on different sides of the room. I, I don't know, it, it'd be impossible. Even if the god dang whole employee ship were to be on that, because we thought about that. We thought like, hey, what if like an employee was out there? We even mentioned it in the audio. There was knocks outside of our window. This is a ship in the ocean. Like, no, you're not gonna get that. I don't know. We've thought of these things, and so I applaud you guys for thinking the same way, because we're trying to debunk it as well. But no. Now I wanna take some time to explain to you guys why Queen Mary changed my life. Like the real reason. 
and, and this is for everybody else. Everything before this was trying to help you guys understand the video, help the haters understand where these faults in our video were, and I apologize for not explaining that in the past videos, but this is like the real reason that I wanted to sit down alone and really go over everything. And that is because, I don't know how to say this. Um, because it's kind of depressing. <laughs> but the, the biggest reason why I do these 3AM challenges and I love the scary stuff and I continue on doing this is like I said in a lot of other videos in the past is I love challenging the beyond because from a very young age, which sucks to say and I don't want to influence any of you guys, but from a very young age, I had learned to stop believing in anything. It sucks. Some of the most influential people in my life told me at a very young age that they didn't believe, and that made me not believe in anything. So for many years, I've thought that this was it. This life, once you die, there's nothing. And so that makes me just have the perspective I do right now, make the most of it. And that's awesome. I love making the most of everything and that's a great way to live. But at the same time, I always just thought it was a dead end. And doing these 3 a.m. challenges like helps me. And the night of the Queen Mary was the final straw. <sighs> to help prove that there was something else out there. And I don't mean to get religious or spiritual on you guys. And if you guys don't believe in anything, that is fine. That is 100% fine with me. I just, to me, just know from my perspective that it is so much better to at least try to believe in something and fail and have some sort of hope than it is to literally have no hope at all. And so whatever you believe in, even if you believe in nothing, like, just know I respect that Queen Mary video so much because that gave me a sense of hope in something that I have not felt in years or at least it proved it. There's been like a lot a lot of things that have happened to me that have made me think hey maybe this is there like yes I should believe I should believe I should believe but this conversation locked it in. And so I will never ever forget this night as something that has literally changed my life because for years I was the most logical, reasonable thinker, scientific, like if it doesn't make sense in my head, I will never believe it. So I understand all the skeptics that are like, screw the Queen Mary video, screw all your 3 a.m. challenges, they're not real. And that's okay because I was there, that's exactly exactly what I thought before I experienced it myself. That's exactly how the most influential people I've ever met who I've talked to before would think. And that's why they have told me at a young age that they don't believe either. Think of it from my perspective. Whether or not you believe, whether or not you believe in that video, it literally does not matter to me because I cannot bring that same experience to you. No matter what I do, I can't bring that experience to you. But I just want you guys to know the importance of it to me because that one experience left me, like up until right now, believing so much more than I ever have before. It gave me something to hope for, gave me something to hold on to, and whether or not I believe in a certain religion right now, or whatever, it just gave me a little like, hey, this isn't it. There's something else. You just gotta figure it out. All in all, long story short, the real reason why the Queen Mary changed my life is not because of it being scary, not because it was traumatizing or something I never experienced before. It was literally a 30 minute time that switched my perspective on everything. And that's amazing. That is why I want to live beyond the norm, why I want to keep challenging these things is because moments like that that changed my perspective, I did not know I was going to experience, and I did. But either way, this was like, this is hard for me to say. <laughs> you can tell from me crying. I don't like to cry. Uh, it shows vulnerability, and I want to be like the strong person for you guys, but I also think it shows strength that I could come out here and for the first time ever tell people that I've had some really hard, struggles with uh, what I thought the future was gonna hold and what I thought of religion and stuff like that and whether or not this be the end 
or the beginning of what I believe in, it at least helped. Whether or not you believe it, like I said, doesn't matter. I just hope you respect that. Anyway, if there's ever a reason, you know, to like preach and plug going beyond the norm, this is it. So like I said, everything that I've ever preached for that motto, like I want you guys to live like a not normal life. All right, like do things that you think are going to help you have experiences you never had. Go beyond the norm. It just is the way to live. And even though this is gonna be my last word on Queen Mary, I hope you take things that happen in the future with a grain of salt. I hope you realize that like everyone else has their own opinion on things. Whether or not their opinion is your opinion, that doesn't really matter. If it affected them in some way, maybe it is their truth. With that being said, I'll see you next week for hopefully a happier video, but I just wanted to get that off my chest. So, peace.